Hello, everybody. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Nick Nanavich. You kind of went over that. Uh, spine surgeon at Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute. Dr. Lavenda, Dr. Smani, partners of mine at the, at the practice, treating some of the things that, that I typically will see occasionally in crossover uh, diagnoses. Can you guys hear me okay? Am I obnoxious enough? Just checking. All right. So pretty informal. I think we're going to get more out of this by asking questions. If you have questions that come along, a lot of the stuff tends to overlap quite a bit uh, with both of these areas, including you know shoulder, upper extremity, and then even lower extremity things. But cervical spine tends to be more of the overlap with upper extremity issues uh, that we typically run into. As Dr. Lavenda had mentioned earlier, we are in the same office two days a week, which really helps out a lot um, from the standpoint of getting patients treated in a very quick fashion. So if I'm seeing a patient and I'm, you know, they're like, man, my, it, I got this pain going down my arm and it kills me whenever that time I do something with my arm and try to do anything. I mean, right there, you kind of know that's not a neck thing, okay? If it's movements causing pain, it's not, and I'll go over that in a little bit. But I'm like, okay, I'm wasting everybody's time, all right, because the patient's not where they need to be. So I can walk over and say, Dr. Luna, I got this patient, this is what's going on. This is what we're dealing with. What do you want me to do to get the patient going in the right place? He'll just say, bring him over here or say, get an MRI, do this, depending on what's going on and what the injury was. But the whole point is we're not wasting time, okay? And the reason why this is so important is because the healing response to a lot of injuries is better in the acute phase getting them treated first, and it's not delaying care and taking longer to do things. And the reason we you know, typically treat patients pretty aggressively and work comp is we tend to look at these patients as more like athletes as opposed to just standard, standard fare. And you notice that whenever there's an injury, like a professional football athlete has an injury, you know, they've got MRI machines typically at the stadium, right? They want to know what's going on with them. I want to diagnose. I want to treat. It's going to give them their best outcome. These are talking about multi-million dollar athletes' investments. The, the best outcome is get them treated very quickly so they can get them protected, know what's going on, and get them going down the right road when the healing's most important and crucial. And Dr. Levena can speak to that as well from a sports injury standpoint. But when it comes to work, work injuries, we need to know what's going on, all right? The first, first step in any, solving any equation I need to know what the problem is, okay? So you can't treat anything if you don't know what's going on. So step one is, is finding out what that diagnosis is. And I, I got to tell you, from doing this for a long period of time, it is the thing that gets overlooked on many occasions. Um, you know, whether it's from Ahmed or if it's from the ER, you know, we do the best that we can. Even from my standpoint, I'm like, something else isn't making sense. Or I'm not sure what it is, but I can tell you it's not the spine. And so we get them in the right place so they can get the treatment that they need. Just to go over... You know, there's a lot of stuff that's in the spine. We have arteries, there's ligaments, there's discs, there's bones, there's muscles, there's tissues, there's nerves. There's a whole host of things that can go wrong when we have these injuries, and we need to know which one's causing the problem. So, you know, there's a lot of knowledge to know about the, the anatomy and the different makeup of what goes on in the cervical spine, but we have to know the whole picture of the patient when it comes to orthopedic surgery, and that's why we do an orthopedic surgery residency to do all these fields, and then we'll specialize in what we're interested in, right? But you've got to have the knowledge of all those other things that go on as well, of where this might be coming from, other than your field of where, where you specialize, right? So just give a quick case presentation. A 45-year-old male, heavy lifting injury at work, doesn't have a lot of neck pain, but has positive left shoulder pain. Okay, right there, there's a fork in the road. Okay, we need to figure out where this is going. And so you know, that's the patient that comes in, and like, as soon as I try to do this, it's killing me, or you're asking me, you can't put my wallet, or I can't tuck in my shirt. Anything involving motion of that shoulder is a problem, typically. So it's not a neck thing. And the reason why I'm telling you that is, if you have a pinched nerve in your neck, I don't care what you do with your extremities, for the most part, it's usually not going to cause more pain. It's just always there. I don't care what you do. You can get relief somewhat, by moving, but it doesn't usually make it worse so much when you move those extremities, okay, typically. Um, you can get what's something called a tension sign, like in the leg. If you bring the leg straight out, it can stretch the nerve, and it can cause a problem if there's a pinched nerve. But typically, if they can point to a specific location in their anatomy with motion and it hurts, that's probably where the problem's coming from most of the time, okay? So we're able to sort of figure that out from a, from a diagnosis standpoint. So now they get a history of some left hand numbness prior to the injury, but it's different now. You know, we've had treatment for physical therapy, anti-inflammatory, standard conservative things, some work restrictions, trying to get them better. We get some shoulder x-rays, some degenerative changes, shoulder MRI. There's that rotator cuff tendonitis Dr. Lavenda was talking about. 
you know, they can read the report and say, I got, I got my shoulders all torn up. Well, it's just kind of a wear and tear thing, you know. By the time we get in our 40s, 50s, we're going to have some wear and tear, just normal aging processes, things change. That's not necessarily the problem. Um, then we'll get an EMG, and it'll show left median neuropathy, which is carpal tunnel syndrome, right? So along Dr. Usmani's uh, talk, to getting imaging too early in some patients actually kind of distracts you from what's really going on. So, you know, the different diagnosis we're going to go over, I'm going to show you in a second here. Uh, one of the most important things we can do is actually a physical exam, okay? And what doesn't happen a lot is patients aren't examined by physicians. They're looking at imaging studies. This is what's going on. You got this going on. Go see this person. There's a, you know, cursory exam or a brief exam that happens, but it's actually not thorough enough to really localize and, and hone in on where this is coming from. This is, a, this is a picture that's over here showing you kind of all the different parts of the of this, the, the cervical anatomy or the upper extremity and where things can go wrong. And so we have the cervical spine, you have the brachial plexus, you have a shoulder, elbow, you got a wrist. There's nerves running through all those areas. And here's where things start to get a little confusing. So you can have a neck injury, okay? But you can also have a shoulder injury. You can also have an elbow injury. You can also have a wrist injury. And we call these double crush phenomena. There's different versions of that. So we need to figure out what's going on with that patient, all right, and figure out which part of this is causing the problem. So we need to know, is it one or is it a multiple of these things that have happened uh, from that injury? Because the problem is, you have to know what the problem is to get them better. If we don't diagnose and get all that information figured out, this thing's going to drag on forever. This patient's not going to do well, and they're going to get deconditioned. And then you're adding more, more insult to injury or more problems because they didn't get better from getting diagnosed correctly in the, in the interim. And that's why I'm going to keep harping on that diagnosis is such an important thing. Once you have diagnosis, things go pretty easy because we know what to, how to treat things as long as we know what the problem is. But if you don't have the problem, you know, this is where things go wrong in, in the treatment of medicine. You have the wrong diagnosis. It's the wrong area. You've got the wrong doctor. So if it's, you know, somebody's got a foot problem, but they're seeing me for their back, I'm not the person that's going to fix that. Dr. Usmani is going to know what's going on with what to do and what's the best way to get that patient better faster. Or if it's a shoulder injury, I need Dr. Lavenda taking over care for that because that's not my cup of tea, right? We know what to do. We've been trained in these things, but it's not what I do day in, day out. It's not what I do best. So you want that patient with a doctor that does that their best, okay, as far as that goes. So we need to figure those things out. So diagnostics, and I always, everybody talks about imaging. We talk about EMGs. We talk about different interventions to get a look at things. The most important diagnostic is that first one, hence the reason I put it in red. Doing a thorough exam is, is unparalleled in being able to figure out what's going on with the patient. We can get all the studies we want, because studies have all kinds of findings. And I'll give you a perfect example. We can get a neck MRI. It's got disc bulges up and down. The patient's got pains in their arm. That doesn't tell us a whole lot. Okay? Because they have disc bulges, that doesn't mean that's where that's coming from. Those are a lot of times just age-related changes. So we need to figure out what is causing the patient's symptoms. And doing that examination, taking time and, and looking over that patient pretty thoroughly, you're going to come up with the, the, the diagnosis for what's going on with them probably 90 to 95 percent of the time. All right, and then like Dr. Lavenda says, we're going to get some imaging to confirm where it is and maybe what level it is or what's going on with that shoulder. Is it the rotator cuff? Is it an actual labral tear? I mean, these are all things that can kind of coincide to have the same presentation, but that gives you a little bit finer point on where the actual issue is and how it needs to be addressed. And for the cervical spine, we'll move on to an MRI. So we need to see if there's a disc herniation. Is it a bone spur? Do they actually have some instability that's going on that we can see on, on an MRI that we may not be able to see on, a, on an x-ray, for instance, a soft tissue like a muscle injury or a ligamentous injury, that we need to know what to do to treat that patient. But based on that physical exam, it really hones us down on what's going on. So we need to do, like Sperling sign, patient puts their head back into the side. That closes down the foramen where the nerves come out of the spine, or the hole where the nerve comes out the side of the spine. If that reproduces their extremity symptoms, Okay, that's, that's a neck problem. They've got a disc herniation almost every time. I mean, probably 98, 99% of the time. So that tells us what we've got going on. We just need to know where it is. And based on that exam, we can pretty much tell which fingers are numb, where that numbness is, tells us where the problem is, so we know what to do to treat it. And again, like Dr. Levin had mentioned, we get an MRI to help confirm what, what's going on and then get a finer point of where that is and how to get it treated. All right, neuro exam. Probably one of the most overlooked things, and people are very uncomfortable when it comes to neurologic exams. Dr. Hobbs, it's his backyard, all right? This is where he lives, knows the brain inside and out. Spine surgeon, similar thing. We know, we know where the nerves go. 
So when patients have complaints of problems, based on just their history, we can pretty much tell which disc it is. And is it in the center of the canal or is it in the hole where the nerves come out of based on how they present? Because if it's coming out of the hole in the side of the spine, when they stand or lean back, it pinches the nerve, we know it's coming out the side. But if it's when they're sitting, usually it's more central, it's in the canal where all the nerves are. It's the same philosophy. Get the patient in the hands of somebody who does this sort of thing on a, on a regular basis. And that's their specialty and that's what they do best. All right? Shoulder exam, you know, that is probably one of the most important exams that I know outside of spine. It's to do a, a, a decent shoulder exam, maybe not as perfect as Dr. Lavenda can do, but I can get an idea of what we're dealing with, and that's where I'm going to go talk to him and say, listen, I, it's, this is in the shoulder, there's a problem here. What do you think is the next step? What should I be doing for the patient? And he'll guide me in the right direction so we can get that patient treated quicker, get them treated faster, okay, as far as get their diagnosis correct. Phalen's test. You know, holding the elbow when I do this, my arm's going numb. Well, there's a nerve that goes around that funny bone nerve around your elbow. When we bend our elbow like that for a period of time, it gets a little compressed. It may have had previous injuries there. That can be a source for it, but it helps us to reproduce where the problem's coming from. So we know that, okay, there's an issue going on with the elbow here. It's not so much the neck because that's not going to do anything for the neck. In fact, usually when you bend your arm, you can get some relief of neck problems, Okay. Median nerve compression test, which is that last one, is carpal tunnel test, basically pushing on the, the wrist, where the, the nerve that goes through the wrist is the carpal tunnel nerve, to see if it can reproduce their symptoms after a period of time. So it gives us some more indications if it's reproducing their symptoms. All these things can kind of overlap. So it's pretty important. So once we have our diagnosis, we have a pretty good idea where we're going. What do we do from there? Well, if I know what the diagnosis is, we can sometimes get an MRI if we need to have a finer point on it. If it's nothing that's worrisome, the treatment can then be a different, different sources of anti-inflammatories, maybe injections, physical therapy, work restrictions. Um, I'm not going to get into too much of the treatments. I just want to really focus in on getting the right diagnosis because from there, it's kind of just an algorithm. It's a flow chart of what to do for the patients, okay? But I got to tell you, one of the biggest problems we see is the wrong diagnoses. You know, in the office, and patients have been treated for three months, for something that wasn't even the problem to begin with. You know, they're, they've been seen for shoulder therapy, and thankfully due to the physical therapists that are out there, they can sometimes get them in to see us sooner because they're like, listen, this isn't their shoulder. You know, working on their shoulder, they're not getting better. And that's, you know, our good therapists like Athletico, these guys are great. We send them our patients all the time because we know they put their hands on these patients. They're working on the patients, and they know firsthand what's going on with them, and it helps us in the diagnostic process, right? So it's a whole team of a collaborative effort to get that right diagnosis. Sometimes we'll do a CT scan, pretty rare these days. For some reason, we're still doing a ton of those in the ERs. It's because it doesn't have to get approved, so they'll do a CT scan to get some information. Probably not a real helpful test if it's not a trauma or we're looking for fractures. You know, soft tissue injuries, CT scans, pretty much gone by the wayside. Nobody really uses those anymore. The only time we use them these days is if we're looking for bone healing, if the patient's had a fusion or surgery, making sure it's healed. Or if there's a, a, a trauma and we're looking at a fracture that we can't see on an x-ray, something along those lines. But other than that, for most of the soft tissue problems we're dealing with, they're, they're, it's relatively obsolete. And it's a lot of radiation that we don't need to be exposing our patients to. Uh, EMG does give us some, some idea of how much is the neck. Is it, the, is it carpal tunnel? Is it both of these things going on? Because those things can overlap quite a bit, typically the neck and the carpal tunnel side of things. Um, not really helpful for the shoulder. Shoulder's better diagnostically from the standpoint of physical exam and MRI. And you can figure out what's going on based on those soft tissues. Not a lot of neurologic complaints typically with shoulder. So when they start complaining of numbness and tingling, typically it's any type of neurologic complaint. They're, it's not a shoulder issue typically. You know, it's like, oh, I've got pain, but it's, it's like a neurologic, like burning pain down the arm, or I feel electrical shocks, or there's tingling, pins and needles. That's typically not shoulder. Not some doctor Bender comes in and goes like something else is going on. This isn't the shoulder. I think it's his neck, his or her neck. Tell me what you know. What should we do next at this point? You know, and usually I'll run over and go see the patient real quick, and he'll do the same thing for me to take a look and be like, hey, what are we doing here? What do we need to do next? You know, as far as getting that patient better. So X-rays, typical alignments. We get those primarily look for if there's any instability or underlying disease, as far as wear and tear of the disc spaces in between the vertebral bodies, which is in the front there. We're looking to make sure all the lines of the, of the cervical spine line up, make sure, again, there's no instability or other um, ligamentous injuries that we can tell them directly from an x-ray. Now, here's a perfect example when I'm talking about an MRI. Can you guys see that from back there? You guys need, like, telescopes or something like that? It's going to be sitting up close. So, you know, there's a lot of wear and tear of the discs. So one, two, three, four. There's five discs that have problems, okay? There's bulging there. You know, this is a 45-year-old patient. There's wear and tear issues, okay? Is that... 
is that work related? Well, it's because they've been doing the same work for 40 years. There's a lot of heavy lifting, things like that. Yeah, I mean, it's wear and tear. It's, it's life related more than it is work related, okay? But that's the, the problem with getting an MRI. We know this for a fact. If I got a patient, there's no neurologic deficits and they're complaining of some neck and back pain, there's not a ton of reason to get an MRI. It's not going to change what we do. They're not typically going to go surgery for anything like that unless we see something instability on x-ray or there's something, you know, question mark on, on examination. But that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about, having these degenerative findings that we get in these images, like Dr. Zamani mentioned about an ankle sprain. You don't want to get an MRI right away because it's not helping you. It doesn't help us if somebody's got a lot of just wear and tear degenerative findings and nothing concerning regarding deficits neurologically from a cervical spine standpoint. All right? So this is, a, this is an axial view. This is a patient laying down on the table with their legs coming out, out at us. So we're looking up the spine. Spinal cord is that little oval in the center, and then the, the white sort of cerebral spinal fluid signal around it is normal. This is a normal level. Nerve roots coming out the side. Spinal cord's wide open. We're looking pretty good, okay? Oops. So now in the corner here, there's a piece of disc that shouldn't be there, which is that black thing the arrow's pointing at. You don't see that at any other level. And then on this axle, do you see the difference now with this black thing sort of coming out the back here, pushing on, the, pushing on a nerve root, trying to get out the side of the spine? So that's helpful to me to make sure I know that that's where the problem is and makes sense with the diagnoses, what the patient's been complaining of, the mechanism of injury. Maybe they fail conservative management. But again, that diagnosis comes mostly from the physical exam, what the patient's told us. This is to help confirm that and see what we need to do about it at that point. Okay? So now, what's, what's, the, what's the takeaway message here, okay? The takeaway message is get the right diagnosis, okay? And if you guys, I mean, you guys deal with this all the time. How many people are case managers in here, by the way? Okay, and then how many adjusters? So quite a few, okay. So the, the, the difficulty sometimes is where to send them what's going on and get them in the right hands, all right? And to me, the, the bottom line is always getting these patients treated and getting that figured out right off the bat. So... Getting them in the right hands, get that right diagnosis, makes everything easier from the standpoint, is there really a problem, first of all, or not? Two, what is that problem? But that diagnostic approach is going to be the most important thing instead of just using images to try and figure out what's going on and then go from there. Any questions?